that a V2 original? Uh, the top end is, I'm told the top end is, the lower end is for a different application. Would you say that Santa Claus is extra generous to us this year? <laughs> a little late, but... <laughs> hey, you know what? The late better than never. We got an engine. D34, spare engine. There it is. <laughs> Look at that casting on the turret. That is a rough cast. Look at this. Кровью отомстим фашистским людоедам за наших жен и матерей. So. You look, right now, you look like you're from World War II, you know, you got that thing on. <laughs> it's perfect. What about you? Always American look. It never changes. <laughs> you know, I've always, ever since I was a cab, I've always wanted to see a T-34 in person. And the first time I get to see it in person, we get to work on it. So, and eventually, de 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 definitely a dream come true for me. So. Oh, yeah. How you doing? What's going on? Well, it's a big day for us. It's really windy today. I hope the sound is not going to be completely ruined. So, but it is so worth it. Look at how rough that cast is. We're going to talk a little bit more later down the road about the cast on this turret. This is a T-3485, that is an S-53, if I'm not mistaken, S-53 gun, 85 millimeter. This was an upgunned version, the main second variant of the T-34. Look at this beauty. It looks different though. I see a lot of differences here. The air start is still the same. What do you think about the casting of this? That's crazy. That's really rough. Wow. I have never seen a casting like that. But you know, it's uh, wartime. It's, they were pumping them out as quick as they could. The casting means uh, we have no time to waste. Yeah. All right, now we're going to try to open it. The trick is, is that we don't really know how to open this. So. Let's see, uh, Scott's gonna see if any of our tools work. There it is. Scott, it looks like you've done this before.
right, well, let's see. <laughs> First time in my life climbing inside a T-34. Never been inside one. This, I believe, is an S-53 gun. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Hey. Now we need to find a real pots kit. Yep, that's it. Make this thing work. <laughs> Look at this. That is so beautiful. Nice oh, get inside. Look at the ammunition in the back. Wow. That's yeah, you can tell it's uh, considerably more powerful. Look at these two guys right there. <laughs> it's like a kid in candy shop. Oh hell yeah. <laughs> wow, this is this is really cool. It's a lot more basic comparison to like 54s, 55s, but it worked. Yep. It worked good. Scott's getting comfortable now. <laughs> I wouldn't use comfortable as the right. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, we're talking about Russian tanks, so it's a... Uh... Well, it's not as cold as Stalingrad in the winter. Yep. <laughs> I need a hammer. Hammer? Um, it's got a lot of similarities to the PT-76, so, you know, we talk about our base knowledge off what we already know, and we've done T-55, T-54, 62, and PT-76, so, you know, we can see that. Well, because if you think about it, uh, PT-76 wasn't that far apart time-wise from T-34s. No. So they still had a lot of equipment left. I mean, that was in production still. I guess they just used what they had. That's right. Oh, it's got like a cylinder. Look at this. You got a lock? I don't know. Try letting it go, push down on it. Yeah, I got it. I got it, okay. Oh, this is great. Look at this thing. <laughs> this is definitely the least comfortable. <laughs> look at the one cool thing though, look at the thickness of the armor. Yeah. In the front, you can actually see that. Yeah. Alright, I got some starting instructions here. Shit. Oh, I thought you were just checking Facebook. Nope. <laughs> So master power is on the right, that's the master power switch. Okay. Pre-oil off. We all know that sound. Yeah, exactly the same too. <laughs> I feel both bottles used one at a time. Same air start switch as the PT-76. That's your elect that's your electric start button, but we're gonna try it air. There it goes. Ah. Alright. You ready? Okay. Let's go. Shit. 
Nicole. So it goes. No air? No air, no battery. We're out. It's too cold. And this, this tank looks like most of the work is already done. I mean, it's in beautiful shape. Uh, it's supposed to run as far as we know. We were not able to start it. As Scott said, there's no, uh, looks like we lost some air pressure in the air tanks and the electrical too, the batteries. Uh, the reason is it's pretty cold right now. So that's probably what drained the batteries. And, um, but if, it, if they said it runs, we're pretty sure it does.
Welcome back to another video from Restoration Passion and Battlefield Vegas. Very exciting day today. This is our new addition and this is our very first T-34. Once again, our speciality here is live fire and of course uh, we have the ability to make this tank live fire. It has everything it needs. We just need to go through the process. I would first like to point out that um, this T-34 has been previously restored by our friend Randy. Uh, Randy is out of Panzer Fabrique in Colorado and they have done an amazing job with attention to detail and a full restoration of this tank already. So a little bit on the gun. Um, we have a plenty of ammunition for this one. Fortunately, this is the 85 millimeter round. Um, fortunately, this is also the exact same round for our D-44 artillery piece that we have in our collection. Uh, from what I understand, it's almost the same gun. They just changed the carriage and the location of the recoil cylinders are in a different spot inside the tank, but the barrel and the breech block, everything the same. So again, that's very fortunate for us. Um, you can see here the, uh, the number one, two, three. This is barrel number one, two, three of that production run. And this barrel actually matches the repair turret that we talked about. Some of the work that we're gonna have to do is clean out the barrel. It is full of cosmoline and uh, junk. But if you look closely here, the same as our T-54, part of whatever demil process, they've ran weld beads inside the rifling right at the front of the barrel. Uh, this section of the barrel here is called the crown and the condition of the rifling at the crown even on a small firearms is a very uh, crucial part so we have to carefully take out these weld beads and get everything shaped as evenly as we can and then you can also see the cuts 
in the barrel to lay your bore sighting tool. So again, crudely in the field, the pieces of wire run through here and then the gunner and the loader would talk to each other while they conduct a bore sight activity. One thing that surprised me about this gun is the actual thickness of the barrel. It is very thin. Uh, you know, even our 75 millimeter Sherman tank, the, the barrel thickness is, it's pretty chunky. This is very thin. So uh, why that was done that way, I'm not too sure, but I didn't expect to see that. What we do know about this tank is um, it is definitely a World War II model, a World War II variant. So those of you that are somewhat familiar with T-34, uh, early T-34 was the 76 millimeter. And uh, once you get into T-34 recognition, there's, there's many different types of turrets, pre-war, post-war. But the early 76 had a very different turret and a very prominent mantlet. It has a very, um, the mantlet shape is very blocked out. Then when they moved on to the 85 millimeter, you have uh, what, res what is resembled here in front of us. What we do know about this tank is the serial number, which we'll go through in a second. Uh, but the serial number tells us that this was made in Gorky, which is uh, factory 1112. And then all the tank on the lower end has uh, matching serial numbers throughout it. So we already have its production date and its production run. The cool thing about this tank is the turret. So this variant of turret we know was made from January 1945 onwards. And the first thing you'll notice is how crude the casting is. Uh, a lot of the post-war turrets have a nice smooth edge to them. And uh, I guess they just, they had more time and there wasn't such a rush to push turrets out. So this turret has a very early 1945 stamp uh, date on it. This turret is commonly referred to as a post-war turret, but from that date, January 1945, uh, we believe that this particular version of the turret was uh, built for repairs and refits only. In other words, the only tanks with a wartime date that have this turret, it was knocked out at some point, brought back for a refit, repaired, and then the this cast, the rough casting early turret went on to it. So these are the uh, inert, um, deactivated guns that we pulled out of the tank. We have both the bow gun and the coaxial machine gun. So very similar, if not almost the same as what you guys would know as DP-28. The difference being there's the removed buttstock and the different style of magazine. But these are these are a pretty cool example. Um, and then we have the pieces we need, which is this yoke at the front here that would actually mount up into the tank. So we're going to use our, our skill set here at Battlefield and we'll have live bow gun and live coaxial machine gun as well. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the paint job on this thing. That's also pretty cool. I think the previous owner of this did a great job. I mean, uh, me speaking Russian, I can definitely say so. Right here on the turret, this is my favorite part. It says, Кровью отомстим фашистским людоедам за наших жен и матерей. It means, with our blood, we will avenge the fascist cannibals for our wives and mothers. And the way it's written, it's actually correct, it's accurate. Now, one more thing you will notice on this turret is the stripe. The white stripe, that was the marker for the during the Berlin operation. The reason that was done, so the Soviet tanks would be recognized by the Allies, by the Allied Air Force, from the air. So they wouldn't be hit, basically, by their own, either the Allies or their own Air Force. The paint job, it seems to be fairly simple, but it's great, it's pretty accurate. This is definitely very exciting, and uh, we, for the longest time, didn't expect to have a T-34 here in our collection at Battlefield Vegas, and here we got one. I mean, definitely, I'm pretty sure every one of us feel the same way. I mean, this is as, as true as it goes. This is a true warrior. By far, this is one of the coolest pieces of equipment we have here now at Battlefield Vegas. Uh, again, true history, as deep as it gets. I'm very excited to see what it's going to be like working on it. I mean, even though this vehicle is pretty much fully restored, but we are going to have to maintain it and so on. So, 
So now I'm obviously inside the turret and you can see once again uh, the incredible work that Randy did with Panther for Bridge. They did every detail. And um, it's so simple being inside here because again what we know previously is our experience draws from T55, T62 where there's a lot more technological features inside. Um, it's interesting learning that and then stepping backwards and then you see where those technologies eventually adapted from. So a lot of this already seems to be familiar. It's just slightly different. And then obviously the gun as well, a uh, very good condition. All we have to do is conduct uh, our recoil exercise, make sure all the, the replenisher and the brake is functioning, check the levels, and then go through our remanufacturing process for the, the gun and then... Um, yeah, that's that's basically it. So it's it's very exciting to um, to get inside this thing. Even the optics in this thing are perfect. There's no scratches. They're not full of water and mud. They're all beautifully polished up. We've even got a complete radio equipment inside the tank. It's even been plastic wrapped for transport. So very nice condition and very impressive restoration work so far. And uh, we're excited. So as you can see here, we do have a spare engine for the T-34. So something to talk about with this one here that's on the stand is the bottom end of this motor is not T-34 correct, but everything in the top end, so the heads, intakes, exhaust, and also the injection pump is all period correct. So if we do have any catastrophic failures on the power plant inside the T-34 itself, we do have plenty of spare parts. So the water pump, generator, everything carries on over. So one of the things we noticed, obviously today we just got T-34 in, we're really excited about it. One of the things we noticed is that on the left bank itself, we do have a dead cylinder. It's not a big deal, we're not going to be running 25, 30 miles an hour in it. But when we do fire it up, you're going to see a lot of white smoke coming out of that left side. It's nothing to worry about. It's just a cylinder that's not necessarily firing. Um, it could be a multitude of things, but it's not something we're going to worry about today or in the near future. But when we do need, but when we do pull it out, uh, that's where we'll end up addressing the problem. When it comes to Soviet gear, uh, especially with their engines, one of the things I do like is they do use aluminum blocks. Uh, with that, not only is it a lot more lightweight than the other ally counterparts, i.e., the U.S. and also Britain. Um, very lightweight, they are more compact as well. They get the same, they're getting the same amount of power of a smaller package. Uh, if you take a look at a lot of US uh, gear, uh, got these huge V8s, v V10s, and V12s, uh, depending on what, what vehicle you're looking at. So I see the ups and the downs, uh, something like this, if you overheat it, it starts overheating. Well, it's aluminum, uh, aluminum doesn't withstand heat as well it does help dissipate better but you get a lot more warpage and that is the only downside i can see to the russian uh, engines themselves so i was fortunate enough to be the first one to actually uh, drive this piece of machinery um originally it was going to be scott but just the way circumstances played out uh, i happened to be in the driver's seat at the time um a lot of it is reminiscent of the other Russian tanks that we've worked on. You got your standard levers. Uh, the steering in this is very similar to the PT-76, or not the, sorry, not the steering. The, uh, the gears are very similar to the PT-76. So, you know, for the most part, this was actually pretty familiar, but it's uh, interesting being inside of this because you you have this bulkhead that's like right in front of you. so. You're very, it's not necessarily cramped, but you have something that's always in your face and you cannot see anywhere but straight. So uh, a, little, a little bit different, but you know, having that experience of like driving the, like a piece of history for the first time, you know, if this was there for the Berlin War and whatnot, and then I'm the first person to drive it here, like, I mean, what's the complaint about that? Like, this is a natural piece of history. Uh, yeah, and I, I would say to mention something, I guess, on somewhat of a personal note is, of course, as a kid, I've built several models of the T-34s, and even more importantly, uh, one of my grandfathers on my mom's side, he worked as a welder at a T-34 factory. He worked on the fuel tanks. He was a welder for the fuel tanks. 
on these things. And uh, my other grandfather fought in the Red Army during the war, uh, sometimes alongside with the T-34s.